Hey everybody, it's me, Richard, with Nightmares Tears, anyone? Today, I am so honored to bring you guys an author of one of the best books I have read in the last three years. Two years ago, I got turned on to this book right here. Yes, it's called Hillhaven Creeps and the Halloween King. You guys, let me welcome and I want to introduce to you Brandon Bernson. So let's bring him in right now. Hey, Brandon, first off, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to do this for me. So I've got, um, well, I've actually narrowed it down nine questions. I could go on for hours with you. Uh, everybody that's watching, I had the opportunity to talk to Brandon yesterday. We talked for over an hour and uh, it was a good time. I tried to record this yesterday and it kind of screwed up. Uh, it didn't work, uh, but we're going now. So uh, in honor of the vintage feel of this book, I've got my fade to black t-shirt with Eric Binford. Yeah, he was crazy. So um, Brandon, let's just go with this. Uh, first off, I got a question. Why Boulder? Why Boulder? Why Boulder, Colorado? Uh, well, I kind of grew up in Colorado, so Colorado's kind of always been home to me anyway. We moved around a lot as a kid, but I kind of grew up just 10 miles east of here in a little town called Louisville. So it's kind of a long story how I ended up back here, but I spent 10 years in Utah with some family. I got a lot of family out there, and I was just kind of in some bad spaces with some addiction issues and stuff at the time, and so I just kind of felt called to home. I just happened to have a sister that lived here and I gave her a call out of desperation and she said, come and live with me and started oh, working cool. at, yeah, started working at the bookstore and stuff. And yeah. So, so how far, how far is Boulder from Estes? How far is Boulder from what? From Esty, Colorado, where that hotel is. Oh, it's just right up the road. I don't even think it's probably 60 miles. Oh my God, have you ever been to that hotel? Yeah, we went actually last year and sat and watched The Shining and- Oh my God, I'm it. so jealous. I'm yeah. so jealous. There's kind of a lot of, there's a lot of cool props there. A lot of, you know, Stephen King sort of things and ghostly sort of memoirs. It just got a, even a feel just walking through the grounds and walking through the hotel itself. You can just kind of feel wow. the, the and, history. And I know you're a Stephen King fan, so it probably, was that the first time you had ever been there? Uh, that wasn't the first time, but that was the first time we actually got a room and stayed the night and did the whole kind of thing like that. So oh my God, was, how cool. Was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So cool, so cool. I never liked the movie. Um, I remember waiting in line. I must. I remember the, the weekend that that movie opened, me and some friends from high school, uh, we waited in line for four and a half hours in 10 inches of snow in Seattle to see that movie and we all hated it. But it is one of my top three Stephen King books of all time. Just don't like the movie. I love the mini series that uh, Stephen Weber did later, later that Stephen King wrote the script for, but let's get back to you. You're the focus today. So um, I'm gonna pop up some questions on the screen as I ask you these. So uh, did you know as a kid that you were meant to be an author when you were little? I mean, did you always wanna be an author? No, I actually wanted to play football when I was in elementary school. I was the quarterback of a little league team for a long time. And then I discovered music after that. And I actually was really serious about music and playing the guitar. But then when I was about 16, my mom had Pet Cemetery in Shadowland in the house. Oh my God. And I just, yeah, I was taking a creative writing class, ironically, at the same time. And I thought, oh, well, I'll read those. And I was not ex prepared for what world I just entered. And it's just spoke so much louder than music. And my family was actually really stunned. They, they were like, wow, you're gonna put down the guitar. And I said, yeah, I'm putting down the guitar and I'm gonna pick up the pen. And that was over 30 years ago. And I just, I just dove in, man. To me, it was just, that was the world I felt like I belonged to. And that was the place I wanted to be. So what'd you read first, Pet Cemetery or Shadowland? I think it was kind of, I think it was Pet Cemetery first and then Shadowland. And I, I kind of had this young, naive impression that, because you know how Pet Cemetery ends, it's just got oh this quintessential God. horror novel ending. And so I just assumed that as, as a young age, I thought, oh, all horror novels must be this way. And of course, 
you can imagine my disappointment when they weren't. And I just, oh God, yeah. But still, it was, you know, King and Ramsey Campbell, Clive Barker, Peter Straub, those were the guys that that really left a big impression on me. Yeah, Peter Straub's ghost story still, 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 still. I still read it every year. I just, the book was phenomenal. So, um, yeah, I would have never thought that you read uh, Shadowland as a, as a as a teenager i i i tried to read it when it first came out and i couldn't get into it but so um well i'm not sure i understood it just so you know i I, I wasn't sure i understood it at the time i had to read it again another 20 years later before i thought oh yeah it was hard hard to understand but that's that's straub's writing so where did your inspiration for miles madigan from this horrific book boon now i don't mean horrific in a bad way this book <laughs> threw me for a loop it, i was not expecting what i got out of boon but where did your inspiration for miles madigan come from i mean he seems like a person that you would personally know well i, I think the the spooky answer to that is a little bit of every character inside me so there's kind of a little bit you know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to say, but a lot of a lot of the, really, to be honest, real inspiration for Miles came from uh, Norman Bates because I kind of wanted to do like a Michael Myers meets Norman Bates kind of thing, Perfect. pouring rain, and so that was kind of. But then I kind of thought, well, if I was a fruitcake and was kind of chasing this guy and obsessed with him, what? How would I be behaving? What would I do? And I kind of did the same thing in. You know, when I wrote Corona of Blue, I kind of did the same. That's written from the female perspective. And this might sound kind of weird. I'm sure a lot of authors would relate, but it was kind of like, I didn't think I could write from the female perspective correctly. But I just kind of thought, well, if I was a woman, if I owned my own bookstore, if I was being wanted, how would I be and who would I be? And, and I found out who that person was. And then I just wrote from that perspective. Mm-hmm. But I thought it came about pretty effectively that way. Wow. So, um, yeah, so those of you that are watching Boone, um, I was lucky and blessed enough to have Brandon send me these, but Boone, I read this one first, you guys, and this one, you guys, um, I'm going to do another review on it because on my old channel, I had done a review on uh, Hill Haven Creeps and the Halloween King, and then I talked about it quite a bit. So um, I just read it again on Friday. I will be doing another review on this one uh, for the new channel, so you guys will know what we're talking about. But um, yeah, it, that it, it was just it, it, yeah, Boone. What, I, it's like I told you yesterday on the phone. <laughs> I didn't know who I felt more sorry for. I actually felt sorry for Boone, but Miles Madigan just yeah, he was he was he was across. It, they're both just like Norman Bates and uh, Michael Myers and the whole. So did Shepherd's Grove remind you of a certain John Carpenter town that would also be terrorized on Halloween night? I kind of stole, I stole that title from that movie because I I was trying to think of a really cool town name and I thought, oh, well, Smith's Grove, that sounds right. I really like just the word Grove. See, I I didn't even think of that till you just said that. Yeah, so I just kind of, I kind of stole that from, that was kind of how that kind of happened with, I kind of like inventing my own geography and my own town names and stuff like that they're not really based on any place that i know so just kind of invent it as i go Mm, that surprises me actually because shepherd's grove reminded me so much of seattle when i was a kid in the rain but um yeah there's a very there's a very disturbing scene in that book with a very big axe in the rain that uh yeah i absolutely loved so um, I did already ask you about Boulder, Colorado, so we will skip that one. But um, did you do you ever see, oh, and I asked you this yesterday, do you ever see the All Hallows Eve Midnight Traveling Spook Show coming back? Um, I, I kind of imagine sometimes, and I don't want to leave like a spoiler for people who haven't read Hill Haven Creeps. I keep getting these flashes in my head of Ashley a few years older being kind of like this who's obsessed with crows kind of thing and and kind of getting okay. older. I almost, I wish I kind of would have delved into the traveling spook show more and given more detail on that as far as kind of its history and mythology or something, but I just, uh, 
I wasn't sure that was necessary for the book, but I don't know. That's that's. You know, I you know I will you know I will read it as soon <laughs> if you ever even like breathe a word of those characters. I'm I'm right there because well, I'll, oh I'll keep that in mind. Thank you for that. Oh my god. So um, yeah, it says on the cover, you guys, the Halloween King, but Brandon also kind of refers to him as the Scarecrow King. But he only just gives a hint on the back cover. So, did uh, was Jepson created or spawned from a nightmare or dream that you had as a teenager, or the even as an adult? The scarecrow in the cornfield. Oh my god! Oh my god! Richard's given me way too much credit, but I'm thankful. Oh for my it. god! Thank you. No, <laughs> I read this, you guys, two years ago. And every time I go past a yard, at, even at Thanksgiving time, and I see those little straw um, scarecrows on people's front yards. Yeah, I see I chips. I don't think that was a like an inspiration from anything. But you know, if you really want to read a good, like a scarecrow book, there's a book I think out there by Thomas Tessier called Phantom. And that, Phantom is phenomenal, and the cover artwork is incredible. Oh, so you know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That was kind of, I remember reading that, like, right in my early introduction to horror, and I was very, that novel had a big impact on me as far as, like, its creepiness. And, and so Gibson, I think, kind of came from that sort of idea of Thomas Tessier's novel, Phantom. Yeah, Phantom is a very good book. And another good Scarecrow book was The, um, the Gatherer. Oh, I haven't read that. I'll have to put that I, on I'm having a brain fart. I can't think of the um, author right now. But another very creepy cover art. Uh, so that's good to know because Gypsum, who reminded me of a character that I had in a bad, bad dream when I was like 14 years of age. But uh, yeah, I, I really liked Gypsum. I, I did. Um, you have to speak into your subconscious or something. And, you know, oh. <laughs> so... I want to ask you this next question, but of course we don't want to give any spoilers away. You can just say an easy yes or no. So, um, do you ever see a sequel to either Boone or The Town of Hillhaven? Yes or no? No, no, I really don't. All right, cool. That's good to know. Not, I mean, it's good to know, but I'm, I'm kind of bummed. But uh, well, so, you never know what could happen with the creative process. But oh God, you know. yeah. Yeah, you could be driving home from work and think, oh my God, that'd make a perfect storyline. Yeah, I mean, but, Boone, um, is, Boone is pretty left open. I don't mean to keep interrupting you, but yeah, I kind of left a lot of, I mean- Oh no, the, you're not You're not interrupting me. Just, what I did to Peter wasn't very nice, but you know, I felt like it had to happen for the story. Oh yeah. Um, and this wasn't a question I was gonna ask you, but like we were talking yesterday, do you, I don't want to say the word regret, but did you ever see um, Hillhaven Creeps or Boone ever being like a five to 600 page book? Uh, did it ever cross your mind? No, not to be that, that meaty. I just never, I mean, I've, I've done some bigger novels before. All the Gods Against is pretty big and Snapdragon's a pretty lengthy. That's another one I still need to read. I but, still. I, but no, I, when the funny thing about Boone and Hillhaven was I, I kind of switched gears a little after, you know, 20 years of writing my own horror and, and doing it kind of the way I wanted. Boone was actually my first attempt to really try to do something suspenseful that was more marketable. So I really kind of wanted to streamline it and just kind of do action dialogue. I mean, I did want to get inside Boone's head a lot and Miles's head a lot because I feel like for a, for a horror fan that's horror fans like that kind of stuff i think but even hillhaven i thought it was kind of like well i just i want to do something that's kind of even on a young adult level so if an adult read it they could say well i could read this to my kids and it would be okay because hillhaven is pretty clean i think it's pretty creepy it's got some good scares in it oh it's very creepy and it's got some great scares but i yeah i just was more kind of along the line of no i just want to kind of do it from a, a dialogue keep it you know, the pace of it kind of moving along. And that was kind of my whole motivation behind those. Not that I haven't thought about, you know, revisiting. I even thought with Hillary and I thought well, maybe I should have done more backstory with characters or more detail with, you know, like I said, the traveling book show, but 
I don't know. I, I think a tail just kind of has its. If it own. comes, it, if it comes, it comes. But um, I, I love them both just how they are. But um, so uh, this one's gonna make you this. <laughs> this one's gonna make a well. No people that follow me and watch my channel know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they know this is just uh, who I am. So uh, do you love making grown men cry, Brandon? Yeah. I. I sobbed. You guys, after I finished this book, I did. I was a mess. I, I, it just made me cry. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer that as brutally honest as I can. I'm, I'm just being completely sincere. Yeah. But, yeah. But when I, no matter what I do, even like my fantasy and stuff, I have a little novella called When We Were Dragons that I think has a lot of real intense emotional content in it. But to me, man, I personally love stories that just get inside your heart and just rearrange oh. things and just mess you up inside in a good way. And I mean, like, just like the level of beauty and emotion and sensitivity. So to answer your question simply, it, yeah, I love, I, especially horror. And I think when horror can balance that emotion, where it's like you can do these creepy things or these dark things and this emotional content, but when you have these characters that are beloved and that you're attached to, and they go through these high dramas, it's, yeah. you know, I mean, even when I'm, you know, I'll be honest, and this isn't like to pat myself on the back, but when I go through Hill Haven, and we get to the water tower scene and, and things like that, or Angela and Matthew talking or, or DeLacy with Ashley later, those scenes still, like, I, I get choked up and just think, it's like, wow, that's such a, you know, that's such a beautiful space to put in a, in a novel like this. And, you know, I think even Boone had some, I had someone tell me that they loved Reba, the, the waitress. Yep. And what I did to her was, you know, but Boone's a slasher. It, it, it has to go the way it has to go, you know. Yeah. Any of you that are thinking of getting Brandon's Boone, uh, Brandon's Boone's, Brandon's books, Hill Haven and Boone, completely different. But uh, if you want a, a phenomenal vibe of uh, that first time, if you've ever read like Something Wicked This Way Comes or even uh, the gruesome and gory Stephen King's It, this one takes you right back to being a kid. Um, I'm six, I'm gonna be 61 years old. And you guys, when I read that book, it took me right back to being nine or 10 years old. And uh, yeah, he did. Um, I remember when I finished the book, you guys, I emailed Brandon and I said, oh my God, dude, I, I'm sobbing. I I just, it, and it was funny because I still have the email. He responded and he's like, Richard, you're, you're making me feel so proud right now. But he's like, you know, you're cracking me up. But yeah, you guys, it was a tearjerker, but it's a, it's a phenomenal read. Um, I would, I would recommend, and I've given this book to uh, kids. I would recommend it to a 10 to 13 year old i would I, I would give it to an adult and you know i told brandon yesterday that i've given it to both adults and kids but um richard so, thank yeah, you so, thank let me just thank you so much for that sincerity i just want to say that is just that's high praise and it just really means a lot to me that if oh can... you're welcome but you know what when i read a good book um something that moves me and gets into me i want to i want to share that book with uh anybody I can and whether it's talking about it on the channel or personally giving the book to somebody it's uh it's a gift when an author can write something that um that we can open the cover and flip these pages and actually get lost and then when we close that book and put it down and we're affected and we remember it two years later and uh like I've I've said so many times on both the channels uh this is a book that I will read uh, annually in the fall time. And, you know, hey, I, I will continue to give it as Christmas gifts. But uh, yeah, that's funny that, um, yeah, you did. You made this grown man cry. And it, you're going to make me It, it was kind of funny you're because gonna... Bruce was like, when I finished it, he's like, okay, Richard, you're like doing the ugly cry. And I was just like, I stood in the kitchen and I was just like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> and yeah, so just be ready you guys Thank if you. it doesn't affect you in a way it's going to affect you some way there's going to be something in uh hill haven creeps that you will always so um uh the last question of this interview uh so 
Can we expect to be scared again anytime soon with a brand new uh, creepy, creepy character like Boone? Uh, I know you've already said. I know you've already said that there won't be a sequel. But what's in that crazy mind of yours? There's, there's got to be somebody creeping and crawling around in the, um, in those little. Uh, there, there's a, there's a few. The brain, I actually, yeah. yeah, I actually have a little werewolf story idea in a small town. I've been kind of wanting to do, but I also have another. And I know you're not a Ramsey Campbell fan, but I, I kind of was reading <laughs> one of his, one of his novels, The Face That Must Die, and I, I really. I really liked the pace and, and that kind of, there's like a schizophrenia to it and just this weird surrealism. And I've been kind of playing around in my head with, with an idea like that as kind of an ode to Ramsey Campbell kind of thing. That's, the, that cool one with, that's the cool one with the artist palette with the painting on the front of the cover, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, always, I always remember that one and the doll who ate his mother. Yeah, I like that book too. <laughs> I don't have. I, I like Ramsey Campbell a lot. I have nothing but nice things, and he just. He's I'm just gonna. Easy. I'm just gonna have to pick him up and try again because, uh, yeah. So, um, that I could go on for hours with you, uh, Brandon. But I know you got to get back to work. But once again, I want to tell you thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and doing this for me. Um, everybody, I cannot. Uh, I. Like I always say, I'm not being paid for this. I'm doing this out of my heart. This man can write. And uh, you guys, if you haven't read it already, pick it up. It's available on Amazon in paperback. You can also get it in ebook. But scared, scared. Now, I wouldn't give this one to a kid. There's Boone. And then uh, there is his fantasy. Uh, Castle Juliet. I still have to read this one. That's a total uh, guys, polar. That's a total polar opposite of any horror. I was trying to. Oh, you know what? I really, movie. really, really like. Um, I, I'm not saying that I don't like fantasy because I have read a lot of fantasy, and I think Castle Juliet's going to be right up my style. I can't get into the Dune fantasy stuff and all that stuff. The Castle Juliet, the characters, and yeah. I think that's going to be another good one. But uh, you guys, I just want to tell thank you, to say a huge thank you to Brandon for doing this. And you guys, pick up his books. And Brandon, take care of yourself. Be good. Live your life as a story. And stay scared, dude. Thank you so much. Hey, Rick. Yeah, thank you for all your kindness, too. And just for this chance to just do a little shout out. It really means a lot that the story has affected you that much and it means the world to just see the reviews and oh, you know, it means else. the world to but, me too that you so shared them with me yeah don't think that this isn't this truly really touches me in a lot of ways thank you so much for your kindness and your, oh you are your welcome generosity. you are welcome so much my friend and keep it up just 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 keep them coming and hey i you know i finished it again friday and i'll probably read it again before halloween so Take care, my friend, and stay scared. We'll talk See to you soon. All right, bye-bye.